Hi, it's The Wire. It's Thursday, December the 13th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Well, we're toward the end of the 2018 calendar year. Right? I believe it's time to look back. It's time to name, in my opinion, the five guys who deserve consideration for Fighter of the Year, right? This is my list. I'm going to leave off a lot of names, right? I hope you include them in your list in the comment section to this video. But in my opinion, the Fighters of the Year, I'm going to name the finalists first. I'll close with the guy I'm giving my award to. The fighters of the year for 2018 include the following, right? I personally believe that it takes a lot to be the king, right? If you're going to be alpha, wow, that's a heavy job. If you're the one filling the arena, if the fans are coming to see you, if the press is hanging on your every word. If your name comes up when two guys are fighting thousands of miles away, if you actually have game to justify the box office and you're able to pull it off, people actually somehow look at you as an icon, a role model, you somehow find a way to convince everyone that you're just that. Then in my opinion, you deserve special consideration. So the first name on my list, and I believe this guy is walking on a high wire. I think the job he's pulling off is next to impossible. Right? People view him as a great fighter and he's learning the sport right now. More importantly, he's pulling it off. He's taking big fights and he's winning them. Anthony Joshua, in 2018, this year, and make no mistake, in the heavyweight division, whoever you think is the best, this guy is the box office king. Right? He is the one the fans come to see. He wasn't even in the United States. The night of the Wilder Fury fight. Both guys felt a need to mention him after their fight. Both guys. His presence was in the room. In 2018, forget all the hype and all that other stuff. Just to understand in the ring to justify the hype. Unbeaten Anthony Joshua took on another unbeaten champion, Joseph Parker. Now, whatever you thought of that fight, and you've heard me here say, you know, either guy could have been awarded the decision. That the referee gave probably the worst performance a ref has given in a heavyweight title fight in several years, right? That Anthony Joshua had a problem getting his right hand out of the holster the entire night. Well, the bottom line though is I'm gonna reward him because this is the big name who is giving you big fights. I agree, I'm upset. I'm upset that the guy didn't take on Wilder or Fury in calendar year 2018. But understand, he wasn't exactly home on the sofa. The guy took on unbeaten Joseph Parker. He follows that fight up with a match against former Olympic gold medalist. Understand, Josh was a gold medalist. He fought another gold medalist. Former heavyweight champion. A guy on a winning streak who had just destroyed David Price Alexander Povetkin. And Joshua closed that show by stoppage. 
right? One of the finalists, he didn't win the award for me, but one of the finalists in my consideration of the fighter of the year for 2018 was Anthony Joshua. Another, and I have the utmost respect for this guy, right? I know many of you think differently, and I have bet against this guy in some big fights. But another guy on this list who is big box office, who warrants big box office, who's in the news even when he's not fighting, is Canelo, Saul Alvarez. The first half of the year, we were getting ready for that Golovkin rematch. And then the phrase, tainted meat hit the lexicon. Right? Canelo wasn't even in the ring. But he's so big, you heard tainted meat, and it was all over the boxing community. Right? They even had a commercial where Abel Sanchez, Golovkin's trainer, was eating meat. Golovkin got a deal with Michael Jordan's outfit. Right? People took sides. You heard tainted meat. Canelo's so big that people immediately said, hey, I, I support Canelo or I don't support Canelo. You know, maybe that meal off the food truck was tainted and he didn't know. What about these other guys hit with tainted meat charges who got slapped on the wrist? Shouldn't this fight go forward? Canelo's one of those rare fighters who's so big that you're actually paying attention to what the Boxing Commission does with him, whether they're going to allow his fight to take place. Then I could tell you I went to see that Golovkin rematch when it eventually happened, after Canelo came off suspension. Yes, a guy who was suspended part of the year is on my finals list. And I got to tell you, while I was sitting there, while I was looking at Saul Alvarez, and keep in mind, this is a guy who fights big fights, right? He fought Mayweather. He fought Golovkin twice, right? Not to mention Cotto, Austin Trout, Arislandi Lara, etc. James Kirkland. So as I was watching the fight, Canelo comes out. Here he is against Golovkin, who going into that fight was viewed as a Goliath figure. Right? The narrative was that Golovkin had Canelo leaving the pocket in the first fight. Right? Hell, that's the way the fight went. Right? Second fight. It's rare to see a guy at a big fight decide, I'm going to own the pocket. When the guy's fighting a heavy puncher. But that's exactly what Canelo did. I was rooting for Golovkin, but as I watched the fight, I was thinking to myself, man, Canelo is bold. We can debate who won that second fight, but I don't believe we can debate Canelo's boldness in his choice of opponents, and in the way he fights the fights, right? That Golovkin fight, wow. Canelo in the pocket, trying to collapse the pocket on Golovkin? <laughs> Let's just say that was one of the more surprising strategies on the year. And, of course, it got him officially the win. Another guy who belongs on this list had a tremendous year. I privately feel he beat two of the better pure boxers in the sport. Right? Really, two of the top 15 guys in the sport, in my opinion. In a unification match, he stops Jorge Linares. That's shocking, folks. Stops him on a body shot. He follows that up by having a competitive fight against Jose Pedraza. Holds his own, then drops Pedraza in the 11th round. Fight ultimately goes the distance. But let's just say, in terms of taking on high caliber opponents in tough fights, Vasyl Lomachenko deserves your consideration. Right? Understand he gained weight to fight Jorge Linares, right? This is another one of those big name guys 
taking on tough fights, I tip my hat. Finally, Tyson Fury, before I get to the winner. Tyson Fury started the year having not fought for more than two years. Folks, he was on the outs. He ends the year with no less than Lennox Lewis and Floyd Mayweather, believing, among others, let me raise my hand, that he was robbed of unbeaten Deontay Wilder's WBC heavyweight title. Right? I feel this guy is the best heavyweight. He had a hell of a year. The skill level, even as he's getting himself back into shape, even as he's losing a lot of weight during training, the skill level is undeniable. Right? His story is really the most remarkable. I believe Tyson Fury belongs in this pool of fighters. But the fighter of the year for me is also the person Sports Illustrated picked. It's very hard to vote for anyone else, quite frankly. This guy's year was that ridiculous. First, in a title unification match, he goes to Maris Breedis' backyard to fight unbeaten Maris Breedis. Think about that. By the way, Maris Breedis right now has a win over one of the heavyweight champs, the Diamond Boy. Right? Well, let me just say this. Manuel Char, Breedis got the stoppage. Well, Alexander Usyk goes to Latvia and beats Maris Breedis. Now, as if that wasn't crazy enough, right? Beating unbeaten champion Maris Breedis in his backyard. He then fights unbeaten champion <laughs> Murat Gassiev in Moscow, right? Same calendar year, right? Usyk is a guy making a habit of beating unbeaten champions in their backyard. Right? So he goes to Latvia, beats Maris Breedis. He goes to Moscow, gives Murat Gassiev his first loss. So how does he close the year? He goes to Manchester. He's fighting Tony Bellew, former cruiserweight champion who had been on a roll, had beaten David Hay twice. And how does Usyk close the year? By stoppage. In other words, guy never fights at home. The guy travels places against tough opponents and he's popping cherries, taking away unbeaten records and then closing the show by closing Tony's career. Alexander Usyk, who I believe is the only man who might be able to beat Tyson Fury at heavyweight right now. Just on my list, and I know it sounds absurd, right? But Alexander Usyk wins my fighter of the year for 2018. The other guys had great years. Right, but that Anthony Joshua Joseph Parker fight was a little bit too close for my. <coughs> <coughs> wow, this is tough work. That Joseph Parker Anthony Joshua fight was a little bit too close for my taste. The Canelo Golovkin rematch. I thought Canelo lost that fight. I have the utmost respect for the way the guy challenges himself. But I did feel that in the fight, it could have gone the other way. Vasyl Lomachenko, wow, what can be said about him? Simply tremendous. But revisit that Jorge Linares fight. That's a competitive fight before the knockdown. 
revisit the Jose Pedraza fight. And these are big time opponents. In my opinion, and I know the judges score these fights differently. Okay, fine. <laughs> but in my opinion, that was a competitive fight before the knockdowns, right? And of course, Tyson Fury. Wow, fighting Deontay Wilder, great. Let's just say the first two guys he fought in 2018 <laughs> weren't exactly the caliber of Barris Breedis and Barad Gassiev, unbeaten guys fighting in their backyard. So, Alexander Usyk wears the crown for me in 2018. Anyone who says boxing is in decline clearly has not been watching these fighters. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know there are many people out there who deserve consideration. Certainly, an argument can be made that Golovkin should be on this list if you, like me, believe that he beat Canelo. <laughs> What's Canelo doing on the list when Golovkin might have actually won that fight? Also, I understand these lists change fast, right? Rocky Fielding saying, how can you put Canelo on the list? <laughs> he still has a fight with me this year. Look, I agree. Canelo loses that fight. He falls off this list. Maybe I'll have to do an updated list down the road. Okay, fair enough. And I understand some other guys have been brilliant. Terrence Crawford has been brilliant. Now, a win over Jeff Horn, I'm you know, I'm not really sure if I equate that with a win over Murat Gassiev in Moscow, right? But Terrence Crawford has been brilliant. Errol Spence has been brilliant. Uh, some other guys have been brilliant. The man they call Monster in Japan, uh, Inoue, has been brilliant. But we have to make hard decisions. And this list came down to five names. You've heard mine. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.